Good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. My name is Amin Uraba. I'm a geophysicist and head of processing at Stride. And my talk today, uh, named Miniaturization of Seismic Equipment, Enabling Better Seismic for Geothermal Exploration, um, is about um, a new generation of uh, seismic nodes, uh, which was originally uh, designed for oil and gas exploration and now is uh, making high density seismic affordable to all industries, um, including geothermal. So the outline of the presentation is as follows. Um, I'll briefly talk about the benefits of high density seismic. Then um, I'll uh, introduce you to the stride nodes and its peripherals. And then I'll talk about the benefit of um, compact nodes uh, through um, a few examples. And then uh, I'll show you how there's been an uptake uh, uh, by non-oil and gas industries, uh, especially geothermal of this uh, technology. And then I'll finish with conclusions. It's been known for a while now, uh, especially in the oil and gas industry, that denser surveys deliver better subsurface images and also seismic attributes, uh, especially in land environments. So trace density also affects the quality of these attributes differently, as this is nicely illustrated in this uh, quality matrix from work run by uh, BP and CGG back 2015. Where, where you see different seismic attributes in the horizontal axis versus different seismic um, survey densities to in, on the vertical axis. And as can be seen, you know, um, attributes that are mainly related to fluid and fracture uh, characterization require much denser surveys to reach um, a good quality. So uh, once the benefits of high density seismic were established, um, a race for denser surveys started in the uh, industry. Um, early dense surveys were made available by new source techniques, mainly the replacement of source arrays with autonomous single so uh, source points, often shooting simultaneously to achieve quite incredible speed and uh, efficiency. And uh, to catch up with these uh, fast moving sources, receiver systems started uh, increasing channel counts, uh, but their bulkiness and cost limited their efficiency uh, until the arrival of nodal system. Uh, the first generation of nodal systems have introduced a lot of these um, benefits of uh, cable-less systems. However, it wasn't until a new level of miniaturization uh, was uh, reached by one of these uh, nodes, which is the stride node we'll, uh, we'll talk about in a minute, that the full power of unlimited channel count system uh, was unleashed. Uh, and of course, when combined with high product productivity source techniques, they can achieve quite incredible efficiency uh, and very dense surveys um, uh, at a much lower cost. The stride node was uh, made public in 2018 and was known as the nimble node at that time. Um, its origin dates back to 2013 when BP came up with this idea of a very small, very light and affordable node, which was further developed through collaboration with uh, Schlumberger and Rosneft. And in 2019, when the collaboration ended, BP decided to create Stride uh, to commercialize and further develop uh, this technology. So the node is uh, uh, the lightest and smallest uh, node in the market so far. Uh, it weighs 150 grams, uh, 13 by four centimeter dimension. Um, it's a blind node and autonomous node uh, with, uh, which can record continuously for 28 days nonstop. Each node is Genesis enabled for timing and positioning um, and comes in a completely sealed casing, uh, waterproof casing with no connector point. Uh, charging is done through induction from the top of the node and the data transfer through an optical link also from the top of the node. The sensor inside the node is a, a piezoelectric accelerometer with a flat response uh, between 1 and 125 hertz, both in uh, frequency and phase. With potentially hundreds of thousands of nodes uh, in a survey, the uh, charging and harvesting system becomes an essential enabler for handling so many fast moving little nodes in the field without slowing down the operation. Uh, here again, uh, this new generation of nodes are supported by uh, a very compact charging and harvesting system called the Nest, which you can see here on the screen to the left, uh, capable of charging and downloading 90 nodes uh, simultaneously and uh, is actually the building block for the three stride system variants. The smallest one uh, can fit around um, an office desk, as you can see in here, and can handle up to uh, 540 nodes with uh, six nests uh, simultaneously. And the large one is integrated uh, inside a standard 20 foot container and can handle up to 3,240 nodes simultaneously. The example here on the bottom is from uh, the large system used by Adnoc in a trial with uh, 50,000 nodes in 2019. Using compact nodes also means uh, more of them can be carried in the field by uh, one person. Um, the stride deployment and retrieval kit consists of a, a rigid backpack uh, that allows a person to carry up to uh, 90 nodes. 
and uh, also can take an optional RTK positioning system, as you can see here on this picture. The, uh, then we have the navigator tablets uh, and the initialization device, a wireless device uh, that is used to communicate with the nodes uh, for stop and start recording, as well as injecting all the survey information and guiding the crew to the uh, station position. Uh, the deployment is stateless, which means that no pre-surveying is required, which has obviously a significant impact on the efficiency uh, of the acquisition. One of the most significant impact of using such um, compact nodes uh, is seen in forested area. Uh, this example from a survey run in Siberia in 2018 illustrate this quite nicely. Uh, typically, a six meter uh, wide track is cut through the forest to allow the ATVs uh, basically to move all the uh, cable systems. Um, with, uh, with this compact nodal system, a crew of two people can literally walk, uh, walk the, um, uh, the forest and plant nodes anywhere they can walk without the need for uh, line clearance, as seen on this video to the right. Uh, we have also seen uh, similar examples from Northern, uh, North America from other companies using, using this system. Um, and as said earlier, high density seismic does deliver better quality images of the subsurface. This uh, example on the screen here is from the same survey in Siberia shown on the previous slide, where the new uh, denser data acquired with the stride nodal system was compared to uh, an array cable system. Uh, resolution was improved in all directions, as you can see here on these uh, um, uh, seismic sections to the left, uh, migrated images, uh, and also the time slices uh, from that uh, 3D cube as well to the right-hand side. Uh, so this improvement uh, with the nodal system uh, come um, uh, in addition to the uh, operational benefits as the nodal system was twice as fast actually to deploy and achieve uh, than the cable system. And that's still by uh, with ignoring the time it took to clear the lines and also um, troubleshoot the cable system uh, as it's uh, usually required. The benefits in terms of equipment, uh, volume and weight, as well as operational efficiency was practically seen in all environments. Uh, this example on the screen is from uh, a comparative test uh, against cable systems run in the UAE in 2017. The picture on the top uh, shows the, three, uh, the equivalent of a one kilometer line uh, from the three cable systems used in this trial compared to the uh, stride nodes here to the right. So the nodal system was 20 times lighter than the lightest of the three cable systems, uh, required five times less vehicles for transportation, um, and the deployment was uh, uh, basically four times faster uh, than the cable systems. And that's ex ex excluding the troubleshooting, which is uh, often um, unnecessary uh, when deploying cable systems. Um, on that test, comparisons with the single sensor cable system, uh, which was a sensor to sensor comparison, uh, showed uh, results that were very similar in terms, both in terms of raw data set uh, to the left and also process data set to the right. And uh, comparisons to the array systems uh, showed the benefits of actually dense single point receivers uh, recording. Uh, both the signal and the noise uh, in that case become extremely well sampled and therefore making processing much more powerful. Uh, digital array forming has also uh, been produced just to prove that you can still make uh, the arrays later in the processing, but you can do a better job by um, uh, exploiting the full density before doing the uh, digital array forming. Uh, another aspect of single point receivers is also observed when you pick dispersion curves, for example, surface wave inversion uh, for near surface modeling, uh, which are badly affected by arrays, as you can see here uh, on the right hand side. And as uh, mentioned earlier, when combined with a high productivity source technique, uh, like simultaneous source shooting, for example, uh, this nodal system can achieve remarkable trace density. Uh, that's what we have seen in uh, uh, this field trial run by ADNOC in 2019, when uh, one of the densest land seismic surveys uh, on the planet was actually acquired in Abu Dhabi, reaching 184 million traces per square kilometer. Uh, a crew of 36 people achieved an average deployment and retrieval speed of 15 seconds uh, per station, as you can see here on this graph. Uh, and, and that was uh, for um, a 12.5 meter spaced um, uh, nodes. Uh, they were deploying 10,000 nodes and retrieving another 10,000 nodes the same day, uh, working on average six hours. 
per day. Half a million uh, node deployment was uh, made uh, at this survey, and the result uh, was a much higher resolution uh, of the target reservoir, uh, as you can see here on this example, uh, and a very good quality AVU attributes. Uh, this was um, presented at the SCG 2021. So the benefit of this nodal system was quickly recognized by contractors working in the geothermal uh, industry, which um, are mainly focused around urban and semi-urban areas, uh, where having a light cableless system to move around quickly and with minimum footprint is uh, really a game changer uh, for these users. Um, reducing crews and vehicles uh, reduces uh, HSC exposure, uh, having a fast moving uh, spread to follow a fast moving source is also very important as shooting windows in urban environments are usually quite short and uh, not very flexible. Um, autonomous nodes recording independently carry much less risk of uh, a spread failure, commonly seen with uh, damaged cables, and nodes are much easier to hide and much uh, less visible than, uh, than cables. Uh, the minimum footprint of uh, this nodal system makes uh, permitting also much easier to, to get, especially with farmers, uh, and obviously uh, all this will eventually lead to cost saving. Another example of the impact of uh, nodal, this nodal system uh, on um, uh, small non oil gas industries like this geothermal is the uh, easy move from 2D to 3D or 2 to 3D surveys. Um, so uh, let me explain. The example here on the screen is, um, uh, is courtesy of uh, GTG and Real-Time Seismic, uh, two contractors uh, uh, working with nodal systems in the geothermal industry in Europe, uh, who, um, who regularly turn uh, 2D jobs into 3D surveys by, by laying all the receivers uh, of their 2D lines before starting the shooting. So this allows all lifelines to record uh, any fired sources during the survey and combined with modern uh, processing techniques, uh, up to the 3D volume or cube is produced as a, a free byproduct of the multiple um, intended 2D lines in the first place. Um, this is obviously made possible by the availability of a large nodal inventory, but also this inventory of nodes has to be uh, very uh, fast and easy to deploy. Uh, as we all know, 3D um, are much more informative uh, seismic than 2D, especially in complex geology. Uh, and uh, the complexity and the cost of acquiring a 3D is, uh, is uh, in a way slowly lifted by this, uh, by this new generation of nodal systems. Um, another um, free by product, so to speak, of, this, uh, of the continuous recording of, uh, produced by these uh, nodal systems is actually the passive seismic data which can be used to generate um, virtual shots, which in turn can be inverted for S-wave velocity uh, profiles. Uh, to, um, to the left here on the screen, you see an example from uh, Padua University in Italy, where the stride nodes were used uh, in an archeological survey. Uh, the small footprint of the nodes was actually essential in surveying very close to sensitive sites. Here is, was the uh, Scroveni Chapel, uh, which is a um, uh, UNESCO site. Uh, protected, protected site. We can see here an active shot to the left uh, using a weight drop compared to the uh, virtual shot from the same location using just only the ambient noise uh, from the city. So although this hasn't been inverted yet, uh, we can already see that uh, these uh, two um, shots contain uh, useful information and actually quite likely complementary information. The example here to the right uh, um, uh, here is a virtual shot uh, using interferometry applied to the ad hoc high density survey presented earlier. And the ring here you see is of the virtual shot has a, a central frequency of about two hertz, which means you can go quite um, deep um, uh, in the, from the surface. Uh, uh, an initial inversion run by CGG uh, show actually a, a VS velocity inversion uh, around, uh, around here uh, in the velocity profile. Um, and one last particularity of this nodal system is uh, its uh, ability to record in horizontal direction uh, within a certain frequency range, uh, a feature that has attracted interest from users working in the geothermal industry, but also in seismic risk industry, where S-waves um, are a very valuable source of information as they 
don't get affected by fluid content um, and also have um, a higher vertical resolution than P waves. On the screen here, you see um, a test that was run by an, an Italian company called uh, OGS uh, using 720 stride nodes combined in 3C configuration to create 240 3C stations planted at 2.5 meter spacing. Uh, the, uh, these stations were recording next to a 14 hertz horizontal geophone uh, planted next to uh, each one of them, and uh, an S wave vibro size uh, was used uh, in both SH and SV mode as, um, as a source. Results, as you can see here on the right hand side, uh, showed nearly identical records uh, from both systems. Um, uh, both in terms of uh, raw data, frequency content, and also uh, process data set. Here you've got the SH brute stack from both systems. And this is very, these were very encouraging um, uh, results uh, that can potentially boost the acquisition of multi-component data on land by allowing the operator to use uh, the same inventory for both P uh, and S acquisition. So to conclude, uh, we've seen that dense seismic surveys have uh, always been important for subsurface exploration and monitoring, especially when fluid content and fracture detection uh, are required. This was valid for uh, oil and gas exploration and is still valid for uh, geothermal industry. Um, we've seen that bulky heavy cables are uh, being progressively but surely replaced with uh, smaller, lighter autonomous nodes that reduce uh, cost, time and HSE risk. Uh, We've also seen that the latest new level of miniaturization reached by the uh, stride nodes, for example, is making seismic technology much more accessible and affordable to non-oil and gas industries, especially geothermal. And finally, we've seen that the easy move uh, from uh, 2D to 3D and also to high density seismic, in addition to some byproducts of this uh, nodal system, like passive seismic and 3C capability, uh, can actually help overcome several imaging challenges uh, encountered in the uh, geothermal industry. A uh, few acknowledgements before I finish. Um, first of all, I would like to thank Stride for authorization to publish and uh, BP, Rosneft, um, ADNOC, HITA, RTS, GTG, OGS, and Padua University for the different examples I've used in uh, this presentation. So this is the end of my presentation and I'm ready to take any question.